This is the Jerome Markowitz Memorial Center. It's a museum that honors the memory of our company's founder, and it chronicles the development of our products from the company's beginning to the current uh, time. And Jerome was an inventor and a tinkerer, and through his lifetime, he and the company that he led wound up holding more than 100 patents in sound production and related technologies. So what you see here is the, the remnants of the very first organ that Jerome built. This was the tone generation, and if you look closely, you'll see a lot of vacuum tubes. Hardly anything uses vacuum tubes anymore, but we still provide service for instruments of this vintage, and there are still several of them out there serving customers today. We're very proud of the product support that we offer, and to my knowledge, we're the only manufacturer of any kind of electronics that's still supporting instruments that are 70 years old. The very first instruments that Jerome made and the very first patent that he held um, was one that used a stable oscillating circuit to produce a tone. And that was the centerpiece, the cornerstone for the very first electronic organs. This assembly that I'm holding was used as tone generation in instruments built by our company in the 1960s. There aren't any vacuum tubes on it because by the 60s, vacuum tube technology had been surpassed by transistors. The little tiny silver cylindrical components on this board are transistors. And the transistor, coincidentally, was developed and invented not far from here in Allentown by the Bell Labs. And when we started to use transistors in our organs, the efficiency of transistors and their capabilities contributed to a great increase in our company's success. Through the 1960s, Allen organs were exported, began to be exported around the world, and some of the instruments on display here have uh, a very rich significance. You'll see a scale model here of an instrument that was built during that time, and it was installed in the United Nations Chapel in New York City. This instrument is the very instrument that was used for the opening of Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center at that time had uh, purchased a pipe organ for this facilities, but the pipe organ was not yet completed and was unable to perform in the opening ceremonies. And so um, Lincoln Center asked us to pre uh, produce a, an Allen organ for them, or provide an Allen organ for them. And in the newspaper the next day, one of the critics that um, reviewed the concert made some comments about how wonderful the new pipe organ sounded in Lincoln Center. He obviously didn't realize that the pipe organ wasn't playing and it was an Allen organ instead. Both the vacuum tube technology instruments and the transistor instruments that I've shown you fall into a category called analog. The technology of that day used electronic circuits to imitate what was happening in a pipe. And the imitation was good, but it wasn't quite perfect. And in the late 60s, we partnered with North American Rockwell in what became a revolution in the music industry. North American Rockwell had been contracted by NASA to develop the miniaturized computers that needed to go into the Apollo spacecraft and would time the firing of the retro rockets to get the astronauts back into the Earth's atmosphere safely. The timing of this sequence was very important because if it wasn't done exactly the right way, one of two very bad things happened. The return module would go into the atmosphere too quickly and burn up, or it would enter at too shallow an angle and bounce off. So uh, the, the computerized control was of paramount importance. After, um, na after Rockwell developed the computer, the miniaturized computer for NASA, they looked for other 
applications for that technology. By the way, until that technology was developed, computers were huge things. They were the size of railroad cars. They took up entire rooms. And it wasn't until Rockwell came up with a way of shrinking that circuitry into a very small area that the computer could be small enough and light enough to go into a space capsule. That was the beginning of all PC-related and digital-related technology that we use in our phones and on laptops and in iPads and every kind of computerized device. One of the things that Rockwell found was that they could store a sequence of numbers and then re produce events using that same sequence of numbers. And they came to us and proposed that we would develop together a musical instrument that used that technology. And when Jerome Markowitz saw the potential that digital technology held, he literally bet the ranch on it. He was a very conservative businessman, but at that moment he saw this was the future of music. And so we plunged into a three-year-long development project with North American Rockwell, and this instrument in back of me was the engineering model. As I said, up until this time, all musical instruments, digital, no, sorry, all electronic musical instruments made sound using analog technology. And it was an imitation of uh, the natural event that we were trying to replicate. But with digital technology, you could take a sound, measure it, turn it into numbers, store those numbers in a computer, and then use those very same numbers to reassemble the sound and recreate it with the same authenticity that a photograph recreates the object that's photographed. Everything up until this point was like a Van Gogh or a Rembrandt painting. Beautiful to see, but not exact in its detail. What we created here was more like an Ansel Adams photograph. And we used state-of-the-art technology for the 1970s. And in that technology, a circuit board of this size was shrunk photographically down to an area of this size, a very small square. 3,000 transistors could fit into a small square like that. This instrument is one of the very first Allen organs to be built with digital technology. The actual very first instrument, and you'll see it in this photograph, and you see it looks very much like the one here in front of me, that instrument is now in the Smithsonian. And that's because the Smithsonian agrees that uh, the historical significance of this instrument was quite fantastic. And pictured in this photograph is Jerome Markowitz, his widow Martha, and the other gentlemen who were part of the management team of Allen Organ Company at the time that digital technology was unveiled. Um, this is Jureen, J Eugene Moroz. He was the plant manager. John Daniel, who actually sold the very first uh, digital instrument. Bob Pierce, who was the vice president of sales. And Leonard Helfrich, who was the company's treasurer at that time. Now the digital technology we're using today is generations beyond the technology of these instruments. And to use the uh, analogy, if this was like a handheld calculator, what we build today is more like a supercomputer. As a matter of fact, the instrument that I played for you at the beginning of this tour actually uses the computing power of about 30 PCs. So it really is a digital supercomputer. Now I'd like to take you to the factory, which is about a half a mile from here in Mukunji, and show you how these instruments are built. <laughs> 